Introduction to the World Religions, Lesson 4, Part 2. So this will be the second of the, uh, of the three monotheistic religions. So we are now in Christianity. But before we proceed to Christianity, let us first revisit Judaism. And what are the issues sur surrounding this religion nowadays? So let's proceed. Lesson recap, Judaism on contemporary issues. Now, since the destruction of the second temple, the Temple of Solomon in 70 AD, that was predicted by Jesus Christ, by the way, in the New Testament, by the Romans, the Jews, as a people, have tended to settle in foreign lands within autonomous minority, which strive to preserve their distinctive cultural identity. There's this effort for the, from the Jewish people to preserve their distinct cultural identity. For this effort to remain distinct, it's an often countercultural identity, you mga Jews have been criticized and on many occasions persecuted for refusing to adopt a lifestyle and values of the surrounding non-Jewish society in which they live. Now, one of the problems, ano, siguro ito yung pinagmulan ng, ano, eh, ng anti-Semitism, their identification in the Christian gospel narratives with the Jewish leaders who incited the Romans to execute Jesus has only increased hatred for them because of uh, their refusal to adopt the lifestyle and values of the surrounding non-Jewish society kung saan sila nakatira. Uh, but we all know the context. Ano? Uh, the Gospel according to John made use of the term the Jews to refer to the Jewish religious leaders, not to the total majority of the Jews. Let us not forget that Jesus himself was a Jew, that Mary, his mother, was a Jew, that the apostles, the first disciples of the way, were Jews. So it is somewhat uh, for if if someone interpret it that way, it is a hasty generalization to say that all Jews persecuted Jesus. It's not. Now this prejudiced hostility toward and discrimination against Jews is known as anti-Semitism. Such anti-Semitism fueled further persecutions against people of Jewish descent who were perceived as backward. Because they don't want to to uh, adapt to the lifestyle and values of the community where they live in, they were called backwards. No, they were called inferior or even underhanded minorities who are out to exploit, if not destroy, the predominant but nominally Christian civilization. Now, anti-Semitism reached its peak during the Nazi occupation of Europe, engineered by Adolf Hitler. Ito yung nag-result sa ano eh, in the act of genocide known as Shoha or catastrophe or in other words, Holocaust. We are familiar with the term Holocaust. This Holocaust was a systematic, bureaucratic, state-sponsored mass murder of 6 million Jews along with 5 million other non-Jews by the Nazi regime and its collaborators. As you can see on the picture, especially in Holocaust Museum that was made into the background. The Israeli uh, Neset, or the parliament today, you know, has set aside the 27th day of Nisan around April or May as Holocaust Remembrance Day as a reminder of the tragic event. Now so that's one issue surrounding Judaism nowadays. The issue on Holocaust, the issue on the abuses made on the Jewish people, you know, the, the, the idea called anti-Semitism, which actually <laughs> came or, or can, can actually root the cause from the misunderstanding of the scripture, particularly the, the usage of uh, uh, Jews sa gospel according to John. No? They, they, naging, ano na yun, naging kakambal na yun ng the whole of the Jewish nation or the whole of the Jewish people. Another issue will be the secular messianism, which they call Zionism. Zionism is the promotion of the resettlement of Jews united as a nation, preferably in their ancestral homeland of Canaan or Palestine. Now, the movement began in the 19th century Eastern Europe. They, they were triggered by continuing outbreaks of anti-Semitic violence na the climax with, with the emigration caused by Adolf Hitler's final solution to the uh, called Jewish problem. Now, the triumph of Zionism came with the establishment of the State of Israel on May 14, 1948. Kaya lang, 
This new state of Israel, populated mostly by Jewish immigrants, led to further com conflicts with the earlier Palestinian Arabs who already occupied the same territory, which was to be shared by these two potentially independent nations. So according to the original partition plan of the UN for what used to be the British-occupied territory of Palestine. Now, despite the declaration of independence of the state of Palestine on November 15, 1988, and its recognition as a non-member observer state on November 29, 2012 by the UN General Assembly, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict which, was caused, which has caused the loss of many lives and much damage to property, continues unresolved to this day. So at least uh, today, yan ang pinakamalaking issue na hinaharap ng Judaism, ng Jewish people, no? yung Israeli-Palestinian conflict that persists until today. Until today. So let's pray for Israel. Let's pray for the people of God that they might surpass this struggle that they are in. Okay, so now we are ready to move to Christianity, the second monotheistic religion. Okay, before we start, you know, as we approach the sacred space, if in Judaism we call peace shalom, here in Christianity we will use two languages to, to, to translate peace. For Greek, it's eirene, and for Latin, it will be Pax. Now, how does Christianity fulfill? I think question that we to achieve at the end of our lesson. How does Christianity fulfill the human yearning for meaning and wholeness? In the very rich philosophical and theological tradition of Christianity, how does Christianity fulfill the human yearning for meaning and wholeness? This is a very good question that we can ponder as we travel, as we journey in Christianity. Now, in what ways do Christians bring about positive influence in the world today? I think the second aspect, the second question, can best be answered by your creative output. The creative output that I ask you to do. In what ways do Christians bring about positive influence in the world today? To start off, I want you to bring out your pen and paper, and I would like you to write the following terms and search for their meanings later. Some of the words here, I will give the meaning, but most uh, I will not. So you will, not, you will be the one to search for the meaning of these. Gospel, baptism, church, ecumenism, incarnation, canon or the Bible, trinity, resurrection, paschal mystery, and Eucharist. Okay. Let's begin. Trivia time. Yan. Before that, ano, I would like to share about the ictus sign. The ictus sign, as you can see in uh, on your screen, ano, itong logo na nasa right side ng screen, cross the letter M, and somewhat uh, a fish figure here, it's the ictus sign. This was used to be the symbol of Christianity, particularly of those who are going to meet for the first time, or, or those who will gather to meet, to break bread, or to talk about their faith, they make use of this symbol. Now, that's ictus. That is the symbol of the fish. Why fish? Always remember the multiplication of the loaves and of the fish. Now, and then, of course, when Jesus said to the, to the apostles, to the first apostles, leave your nets because I will teach you how to fish men. All right? Yeah. So, trivia time. Number one, Catholicism is the largest and oldest, oldest branch of Christianity. Definitely. Catholicism can trace back its origin until 33 AD upon the death of Jesus because of apostolic succession and, uh, uh, and history. Only the Catholic Church can claim that. Number two, Protestant Reformation in the 16th century by Martin Luther brought about the presence of 30,000 plus denominations. Actually, uh, recently I have read an article. It's, it's 45,000 plus denominations. Now, third, the Bible is made by the church for the church for their worship, the liturgy or the Eucharist, which is more ancient than the book because the Bible was made for the worship, for the assembly of the people of God. And lastly, Christianity is never a religion of the book, but a religion of the word or logos. 
It is a religion of a person in the person of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Lord. All right. So now we move to the history and development of Christianity. There are several uh, timeline that can be uh, summarized into the major branches of Christianity. So later I'll discuss about this. But for now, I would like to make a uh, yeah, make a discussion about the history and development of Christianity, particularly in terms of this. Uh, three periods. The Messianic period, the Apostolic period, and the Church Fathers period. So there are three periods. The, in sa pinaka first uh, drawing or first picture, that will be the uh, painting by Michelangelo of the Sistine Chapel. No? I, I would like to put there the Messiah, Messianic period no? kasi it began at the birth until the ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Messianic period will be the period where Jesus Christ, the Messiah, preached the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God and made miracles no? and then the congruency between the word and the deeds of the Son of God. The second period will be the apostolic period. So this started from Pentecost until the death of the last apostle. So the last apostle was John and he died in 90 AD. No, he's, only, he's, he's the only apostle who died naturally and was not uh, martyred. Okay, so that's the Pentecost. The movement there of the apostles to be in hiding because Christian persecution started as early as this period, you know, apostolic period. In fact, um, all of the apostles except John experienced martyrdom. They were persecuted. And uh, again, the movement there will be from the small number of Christians, they began to, to rise in number, they began to grow. Though the climax of all of this will be the uh, period of the apostolic or, or uh, period of the church fathers. It is where philosophy and theology were developed, that the articles of the faith were developed, the doctrines were developed and, and improved because of the influence of philosophy and theology. So church fathers period. So from Clement of Rome down to Ignatius and Polycarp, by the way, they are called the Antonician fathers. They are the direct successors of the apostles, particularly Ignatius and Polycarp. They were successors. They were direct successors of John the Apostle. Yeah. The word Catholic applying to, to the church can be heard being said by Polycarp or if not of Ignatius, rather. Kasi sabi niya, where the bishop of the church is, there is the Catholic Church. So, and then the the, the post uh, Nicene Fathers, Augustine and Gregory the Great, and so on and so forth. Now, the early church was often treated with suspicion by Roman citizens. The Roman citizens cannot trust Christians. The Christians, due to their non-participation in the official religious rites of the empire, that's the reason, which included the worship of the emperor, were branded as traitors by the Roman citizens. Therefore, the Christians must be persecuted because they are traitors. So the early church was often treated with suspicion. Even during that, the period of the apostles, Christian persecution began there. So the early church was often treated with suspicion by the Roman citizens. Why? Because they do not participate in the official religious rites of the empire. They don't want to worship the emperor. Because the Christians will never bow down to anyone except to Christ. So, they were branded as traitors by the Roman citizens. Now, Christian persecution, particularly of Nero, ito yung mga pinakamatitindi and Diocletian. For example, si Nero. Nero blamed the Christians for the great fire of Rome in 64 AD. No, na si Nero naman talaga nagpaumpisa but he plotted it to the Christians so that the Roman citizens will be angry sa lahat ng Christians. And from Diocletian, who was probably the Antichrist mentioned in the book of Revelations, the 666. All right, so that's Diocletian. Now, from the beginning of the apostles, diba, all of the apostles were, were martyred because of the persecution until 313 AD where when the persecutions came to an end. So it was a period of martyrs. 
was a period of offering their lives for the faith, for Jesus. Now, it ended, the persecutions ended in 313 AD when the Roman Emperor Constantine issued the Edict of Milan, wherein he guaranteed freedom of religion for Roman citizens, meaning the Christians can now worship God without worshiping the emperor. They can do that now openly. Yeah. So that's a breakthrough. And because of this, Christianity bloomed and prospered and grew. Now, there are major branches in Christianity. Yeah. At the begin, from the very start, iisa lang yan. No? Uh, even if the church was placed or situated in two of opposite poles of, of the map during that time, if I may, the West and the East. The West being the Roman the Roman Empire, Rome, and then the East being the Greek colony no, of uh, Constantinople when, 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 when uh, Constantine conquered also that land. He called it Constantinople. Between the Latin right and the Greek right, they are one. There's no distinction between them rather than the rights in the language, their own culture their own tradition, but almost the same belief. Okay? Now, over the last two millennia, Christianity as the world's most widely professed religious tradition in about one-third of the human population. So, yun ang uh, extreme fact. Mayroon lang dyan two great schisms. Pag sinabi natin schism, uh, cutting ties, split, or division in Christian history. The first will be in 1054, 1054 between the East and the West. Between the Greek Orthodox, the, for, between the Patriarch of Constantinople and the Pope of Rome. And in the 16th century, during the Protestant Reformation. So because of this schism, there are three major branches or divisions of Christianity. Number one, Roman Catholicism. So in Roman Catholicism, yan, Ecclesia Cat Holos. Yan, Ecclesia Cat Holos. And yung uh, Greek term dyan, no? or the church universal. Since katolos is the same term used by St. Ignatius for the church in his letter, see that ye all follow the bishop, even as Jesus Christ does the Father, and the presbytery as ye would the apostles, and reverence the deacons. As being the institution of God, let no man do anything connected with the church without the bishop. Wherever the bishop shall appear, there let the multitude of the people also be, even as wherever Jesus Christ is, there is the Catholic Church. Whatsoever the bishop shall approve of, that is also pleasing to God, so that everything that is done may be secure and valid. So at least jaan may jubo yung pagkakagamit ng katholos. No, but even in the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, there appeared katholis, so the Church Universal. The Latin right. This is the Latin speaking uh, church, which is the majority of Christendom. So, out of the three divisions, Roman Catholicism will be the biggest in number, headed by the Pope, the Vicar of Christ. Now, we move to the Greek Orthodoxy. John? Greek Orthodoxy, or Eastern Orthodox Church, descends directly from the Greek speaking Christians. They descended directly from the Greek-speaking Christians, Greek Orthodoxy, or the Eastern Orthodox Church. It descends directly from the Greek-speaking Christians. Yan, andun sila sa... Uh, nakalungkot lang, no? yung, Greek, yung, yung Constantinople ngayon, it's now Istanbul. Uh, hindi na majority ang Christians dyan. Uh, the, the Muslims even evaded the Hagia Sophia, the largest church of the East during that time. So hindi na, no? but before... It was teeming with Christians. Now, some branches of Eastern of Greek Orthodoxy are in full communion with the Roman Pontiff or the Pope, but some are still in schismatic uh, relations. Kaya lang ngayon, no, actions and decrees are always in place for reunification because that's the goal. Eh. Sabi ng Jesus, di ba? May they be one. But you have now three major branches in Christianity. Now, the, the schism between Greek Orthodoxy and Roman Catholicism 
was brought about by political geographical reasons rather than doctrinal dispute. The doctrinal dispute happened only when, the, in, in, when in the Niceo-Constantinopolitan creed, dinagdag doon ang word na filioque to describe the relationship between the Father and the Holy Spirit and between the Son and the Holy Spirit. In reality, it's not so much of an issue. It was definitely during the apparition of Jesus to his apostles in the upper room, no? he breathed on them the Holy Spirit. I mean, I received the Holy Spirit. So therefore, the Holy Spirit proceeded also to, with the Son. So medyo ayun lang talaga, no? Because of the political climate of that time, sol-sol dito, sol-sol doon, nagbababa ng excommunication bull ang Pope, nagbaba din excommunication bull ang Patriarch of of, of uh, Constantinople, no? Talaga naglalo lumala yung gulo nilang dalawa. So that's very sad in the history of Christianity. It is called the Great Schism. But for me, the greatest schism happened in the 16th century during the Protestant Reformation, founded by Martin Luther. Martin Luther was an Augustinian monk who decided to leave the church after he was not heard or he was not entertained because of his many questions directed to the Pope about the Roman uh, Church, about the the traditions of the church, which he cannot understand. And at the same time, uh, ayan, this Martin Luther believes in the solas, sola fide, sola scriptura, sola gratia. So he also, because of that sola, especially sola fide, he removed the theoretical books from the Christian Bible. As in the Christian Bible, the origin of that can be traced back to the time of the apostles, even during the time of Jesus, because Jesus kept on quoting the Septuagint translation of the Bible, the LXX, who, uh, which was the main basis of the Christian Bible, the Catholic Bible now. The LXX, the numbering of books, yun ang basis. So at least, uh, you yeah, know, Martin Luther removed the Deuterocanonical books from the Christian Bible and planned also to remove James, Hebrews, and Revelations, but was convinced by members not to. Believe, they believe in the virginal motherhood, motherhood of Mary, including the title of Mary as the mother of God, but later followers rejected it alongside major Christian doctrines. So I said, because of that Protestant Reformation were in Sola Scriptura, anyone can read and interpret the Bible Oh, Nagkawa ng sombrang split, no? Trivia part, ano? And that's Protestantism. That's Martin Luther. Yan. Posting now the 90 plus decrees no, of Protestantism questions na directed towards the Catholic Church. Now let's go to the part one of this lesson. Credo. What Christians believe. Yan. This is the summary of the credo. Yan. Before the Nicene Creed, there existed many other early creeds, often called the Symbolon in Greek. According to Edward Sree, Dr. Edward Sree, a Symbolon had great meaning in the ancient world. In the early church, Christians described their creed, their summary statement of faith, as the Symbolon or the seal or the symbol of the faith. In the ancient world, the Greek word symbolon typically described the object, an object like a piece of parchment, a seal, or a coin that was cut in half and given to two parties. Bakit? It served as a means of recognition and confirmed a relationship between the two. When the halves of the symbolon were reassembled, the owner's identity was verified and the relationship confirmed. In like manner, the creed served as a means of Christian recognition, someone who confessed the creed could be identified as a true Christian. Moreover, they were assured that what they professed in the creed brought them into unity with the faith. The apostles originally proclaimed. So the apostles' creed the traditional na ano na creed the twelve articles of faith grew out of the ancient tradition and according to legend the apostles themselves each wrote a portion of the creed on Pentecost. Of course, while scholars have debated for centuries the authenticity of this claim, 
Many believe that at the very least, a form of the Apostles' Creed was written during the 2nd century and was based on an outline from the Apostolic Age. Both creeds essentially say the same thing, the Nicene Creed and, and the Apostles' Creed, with one being more precise than Nicene Creed and the other summarizing the faith in few words, the Apostles' Creed. The purpose of each one is the same thing, affirming the faith and proclaiming before all what we believe. And this is what the Christians believe. Credo in Deum Patrem Omnipotentem, Creatorem Celi Etere. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Et in Jesum Christum Filium Eius Unicum Dominum Nostrum. And in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. And so on and so forth. So these are the article of the Christian. These are the, ma the major tenets of Christianity, you know, these 12 articles. Remove one. Parang symbol niyan eh. Ang symbol nun, pag pinagkabit-kabit mo, it constitutes the whole of the of the statement or the article. So when you remove one, you do not believe one, the symbol on can no longer be whole again. Therefore, you cannot be called Christian. So a Christian believes what was written here in the credo. So that's the credo. All right? Now, let's go to the ayan, symbol on. This is uh, the diagram of a tablet cut into pieces. Code. The code. Christian ethics is a branch of Christian theology that serves as the guide for righteous moral living. It teaches what it means to be truly and fully human from a Christian perspective and centers on virtues or good habits in personal and social living. So what is that in Christian ethics? But for me, I would like to summarize the Christian code into this great test commandment. A scholar of the law asked Jesus, Master, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus can easily pick one from the Ten Commandments, but he did not. What he said is, Dalawang bagay lang. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. For whatever you have done to the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. So the Christian code, the ethical code for Christianity can be summed up in this too. Love of God and love of neighbor. And it can be summarized further into one word, love. That's how Jesus lived. To be a true Christian, one has to live according to the way of Jesus. How Jesus lived. And Jesus lived loving. By, by, by loving, it doesn't mean the wishy-washy feeling of, of an intense emotion of love of someone. No. When he said, when we say you're loving, when you love, you are you are willing to sacrifice your life for the, the beloved. Just like how Jesus sacrificed himself to the beloved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. The beloved is us. No? So as Christians, Yan. It's not the weak love, the emotional love, but it is a tough love that we profess, that we, that we do, that we make into our lives. Say, aside from that, this love that, that Jesus did, this love that the Christians profess, this love that the Christians uh, consider is not a feeling, but it's not a concept either. It's a person, the person of Jesus Christ himself. God is love. So it's 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 a demanding love because you need to sacrifice something for you to be able to say that you love. Diba? Love is the core teaching of Christ. And since Christian ethics centers on Christ's words and actions, one must reflect on how his words and deeds can be adopted in addressing the different needs of society. And without love, they cannot do that. A true Christian na reverberate niya yung love na ito na sinasabi dito. Yung love na sinasabi dito. The, reverber the reverberation of love. Others must feel it. Others must see it. So that they can believe that yes, they are Christians and they were taught by Christ. Now, how can a Christian 
manifest or made manifest this love. Now, my suggestion dyan, the works of mercy. The works of mercy will be the suggestion for this. Yan. The corporal and the spiritual works of mercy. It's not enough that you have faith. That faith must be manifested in your action. No? To prove that you really have faith. That you really believe. Although pagans do the same thing, but it's a different thing for a believer. A believer walks an extra mile. Feed the hungry. Give drink to the thirsty. Shelter the, no the homeless. Clothe the naked. Visit the sick. Visit the imprisoned and bury the dead. The spiritual acts of mercy instruct the ignorant, counsel the doubtful, admonish sinners, forgive offenses, comfort the afflicted, bear wrong patiently, pray for the living and the dead. This is what makes us Christians. Because sabi nga ni Jesus, di ba? Whoever, whoever will not do this for my sake, yeah. He's not a Christian. He's not a true follower of Christ. Whatever you have done to the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. Medyo tough love lang ang Christian love, I'm telling you. Tough love because it's a demanding love. It's a demanding love. And love has the right to be demanding. So that's the Christian code. Again, the, the secret here is uh, yung love na yan, it's not the love that we think of. It's the love that must be patterned to Jesus Christ himself. Not to our own standard. Alright? So now we move to the cultus. I want you to watch this short clip you know, for you to be able to understand how a Christian sees, how a Christian sees worship. Gospel of the Lord.
with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory. As with one voice we claim. took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. So that's uh, that's the the veil. That's how Christian sees every worship day. You know? That's how Christian sees every worship day, particularly the the Eucharist, particularly the sacrament of the Eucharist for the Catholics and Orthodox, which was, uh, by the way, the original worship of Christians. You no, know? yeah. So allow me to return to my PowerPoint presentation. Yan. Maulit naman sa umpisa. We are now here in the cultus. Okay. So yan. So the Christ, so the Christian liturgy, no? Uh let's let us remember to morning ano no, that the, the early Christians were practicing Jews. Do not forget that even Jesus was a Jew. His disciples were Jews. All right? So therefore, every Saturday, they still go to a synagogue if there's no worship in the temple, there, there, there's no feast, no? to make, make offering. They gather in the synagogue to listen to the word. That was every Saturday. And on a Sunday, every Sunday, they will gather as community in, in house churches, oikos, ecclesia, to break bread. The breaking of the bread. It is now the modern Holy Eucharist. So during the time of Jesus, the breaking of the bread traditionally began during the Last Supper when Jesus took bread, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, this is my take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, and then the, the blood, the wine. It is not simply a, a, a simply a memorial that we know. Ang tawag nila dyan ay anamnesis. This is commanded by Jesus to do this in memory of me. It's always in the present tense, meaning that whenever the mass or the, the, the breaking of the bread happens, they are not just simply entering the past, but the past becomes present. The Holy Eucharist, by the way, 
was foreshadowed by the Pesach or the Passover feast of the Jews. But the offering is no longer the lamb, the sheep, but Jesus Christ himself, the perfect sacrifice. So from the very beginning of Christianity, this, is, this was how they worship and congregate as ecclesia, as church, as people of God. So worship was seen as a communal activity. It's not a, an individual activity where they profess their credo. So the more modern version of the breaking of the bread can be seen in the development of the Holy Eucharist. In fact, the Eucharist came first before the Scriptures. The Scriptures was made for the Eucharist. And the Eucharist, the Christian worship, is defined as the summit towards which the activity of the church is directed and the fount from which all the church's power flows. Because it makes God's work of our redemption a present reality. So that is the Christian worship. So part of, so part of the cultus, we also talk about the scriptures. Ano? As sabi nga natin, the scriptures were made for the worship. No? So Ta Biblia, the book, the sacred text of Christianity. This book contains a library of books. And the Christian Bible contains two sections or testaments. The Old Testament, which is more or less the same as the Hebrew Bible, and the New Testament. Now, the Old Testament that we have now is the ancient canon. Now, for Catholics, you know, this is the ancient canon, uh, the step to a gene. Pag sabing canon, it is the list, you know, the measuring stick or the standard. Ano yung nakasama doon sa list na yun? All right. So, the Roman Catholic canon was based on the step to a gene. Uh, even the apostles and Jesus Christ quoted from this. But some of the books that they quoted were not in the Septuagint. Yun naman ang uh, inadapt ng Orthodox Church. No? Kaya they, they have more books than the Roman Catholic Church. But the Protestant Old Testament, they have eliminated seven books. Or Martin Luther eliminated seven books from the canon. Yun ang kaibahan. And then the Protestant followed strictly the numbering of the Old Testament books ng Hebrew Bible. No? Yun ang kaibahan. Uh, sa tatlong ito. Alright? Bible, New Testament, lahat yun para pagkakot 27 books. Only the Old Testament was different ng number. Alright? Now, contemporary issues surrounding Christianity today. So, let's see. Ano ba yung mga contemporary issues nila? Now, one, every year on January 1, the Pope marks the World Day of Peace with a special message inviting all people to reflect on the important work of building peace beginning with St. Paul, Saint Paul VI in 1967. It was continued by St. John Paul II and Pope Benedict XVI and now Pope Francis. Now, isa pa, no? the document on human fraternity for world peace and living together was signed in Abu Dhabi by Pope Francis and the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Ahmed El Tayeb. Hindi lang yung milestone no, in relations between Christian and Muslims, but also represents a message with a strong impact on international scene. In the preface, after affirming their faith, after affirming that faith leads a believer to see in, in the other a brother or a sister supported and loved, this text is spoken of as a text that has been given honest and serious thought which invites all persons to have faith in God and faith in human fraternity to unite and work together. Now, St. John, Saint John Paul II greatly advanced the relationship theologically by repeatedly portraying Jews as the present-day people of the covenant concluded with Moses and partners in a covenant of eternal love which was never revoked. Which was never revoked. The realization that Jews enjoy covenantal intimacy with the saving God raises new theological questions that continue to be studied by both Catholics and Jews. But there have also been immediate consequences. One is that the Catholic Church, as Pope Benedict was, has written, does not concern herself with the conversion of the Jews. Because Israel, according to Benedict XVI, retains its own mission and is in the hands of God. Now, Pope Francis also visited Turkey 
and it was to advance the cause of unity among Christians by helping heal the wounds caused by the almost thousand year separation between Catholic and Orthodox churches. Brother Gumpisayan during Paul VI, ano, if you can see yung picture dito sa screen, yung nasa upper part, yung nasa tapat ng contemporary issues na picture, ito yung nag-umpisa niya. Ano. So this was Pope Paul VI and this was Athenagoras, the, the Patriarch of Constantinople and the Pope of Rome. So in this meeting, they made a, 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 what do you call this? They made a, or they wrote they wrote a joint declaration na informing the Christian world that they are now removing the sentences of excommunication pronounced by each other in 1054. So the two leaders with visionary intuition understood the urgency of Christian unity and so sealed the Vatican II commitment to ecumenism. So they are now really talking. Including the Lutheran World Federation and the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity, they signed a joint declaration on the doctrine of justification in October 1999 in Augsburg, Germany. So this action ended centuries-old disagreement and conflict over the crucial subject of justification, the original point of dispute between Catholic and Lutheran traditions. So yeah, at least uh, there, there are now lots of talking, lots of uh, in, interfaith dialogue. Ecumenism. Ecumenism can only be applied to Christians. Ecumenism can never be applied to other groups. Interfaith or interreligious dialogue will be applied. But for fellow Christians, it's ecumenism. Okay, so that's uh, the contemporary issues facing the Christian uh, faith uh, nowadays. So these are our references. Feel free to uh, read most of them so that there will be supplemental data uh, that you can get. Of course, you can read your textbook anytime. All right? So, yan. I'll end Christianity uh, in this lesson. Thank you for listening. So, tune in for the last monotheistic religion, Islam. Have a great day.